Hi guys, I am here with Angelie, the Yorkshire Terrier, and she's going to get a short trim with poodle feet and a Westie style face. So let's get busy. Good morning, Angelie. Are you ready to get pretty? Are you ready? Okay, let's do this. We've got a fun day today. We've got her, then a soft-coated wheat and terrier puppy, followed by three more Yorkies. And then we'll take lunch and log off. And our second stream will have a standard poodle and a teddy bear trim and a few other dogs. Plus, I will be washing my dogs today, Ammo and BB. Ammo is in a show puppy trim. BB's in a modified uh, puppy lion trim kind of thing. <laughs> so they're just getting bath and blow dry and the face is trimmed. So anyway, let's get busy. I've got my um, live stream playing up front accidentally, so I'm going to go turn it off so we don't have feedback. I'll be right back. By shaving her feet bring you guys up a little bit closer here so that you can see what I'm doing kind of kind of right kind of all right let's do this let's do this Angelie Shave your toes. Yes, your mommy likes your shaved toes shaved. Yes, he does. So the pet parent really doesn't like much done or want much done on her soft-coated wheat and puppy. We're just going to tidy up around the edges. She's five months old. She's more than old enough for a full grown. But it is her first time at the salon, so I'm just going to try to pull her all together without doing too much. For me personally, my theory on puppies unless they're just emotionally unstable or emotionally can't handle it, I immerse them in everything that they're going to need to be having done because it's a learning thing. It's, it's, this is their life and I believe in preparing them for their life, you know, and teaching them all the little pieces of things that they're going to need to know. And my, my theory on it is puppies can certainly handle it. Again, unless they're unstable, coddled. So basically what I do is I evaluate each dog and each puppy's temperament and make decisions as far as what they can handle, you know. My own dogs, I fully groom them the day they come home, <laughs> you know. Eight weeks old, they're getting a full haircut, period. Ammo came to the shop and got a haircut at eight weeks old before he went home. <laughs> and he needed it. He had so much hair. I've never seen such a hairy poodle puppy.
Good girl, Angela. So as a reminder, I do not answer questions or acknowledge the chat at all while I'm streaming. I don't read the chat. I don't go back and read the chat later. If you have a question for me, find any one of my other videos and leave the question in the comments below the video and I'll get to it within a day or two. If it's a legitimate grooming question. Silly questions I'm going to ignore. <laughs> Like one I got not too long ago. Can you please tell us why and explain to us what breeders think as to why they dock tails? And I'm like, no, I don't speak for breeders. Sorry. I don't know what a breeder thinks. Go ask them. <laughs> I'm not a breeder. Or another one was like, um, can you tell us what that dog was thinking and I'm like you have to ask him yourself I don't know <laughs> hello Angelie good morning to clip her against the grain on the trunk of her body with a five blade wherever that might be Parent likes her nice and short.
and Julie is a senior dog. I can't remember her exact age, but I think she's about 12. So the primary goal of my live streaming is to allow my clients a window into the salon to watch over their pets while they're getting groomed. Calm their fears. She's a girl. Yes, I love you. I love you. Okay, we're gonna go put her in the bathtub. <laughs> yes. I know. We can go put you in the bathtub. You ready? Come on. Take you guys with me. Say good morning, Angelie. Isn't she cute? She's so precious. So precious. Okay. 
So the Yorkies that we have besides Angelique today are Pistachio and Promise and Lexi. Lexi's also a senior. I think she's about 14. So those of you who've been watching the last couple of days, I've done a few doodles where we kept the eyelashes showed you how I trim around the eyebrow eyelashes. And I was watching another groomer who had a different technique yesterday. She holds the eyelashes down over the eye and trims. I, I would think, you know, I haven't tried it that way, but I would think that a dog would pull their head away if you're holding down over the eye and holding the eyelashes down. Everybody's got their own way of doing things, though. But I was thinking to myself, that could be why, if people are doing it that way, that they hate trimming around eyelashes. Because that would make sense. If the dog's yanking its head away, then it would certainly make sense, wouldn't it? I find that by stretching the skin back, it separates the eyelashes from the hair on the skull. And it gives you a good firm hold to get in between there. So if I have a dog today that, that would need that, you know, we'll talk about the two different ways of doing it. Or next time I have a dog with lashes, we'll talk about the two different ways that you can do that and see the response from the dog. Let's go get you dry.
such a good girl, Angelise. She's a good girl, Angelise. So I'm gonna go back over the trunk of her body with a seven blade. I'm going to use a 5 8 HT against the grain on the legs and the belly and under the tail. I'm gonna do with a 10 blade, go back over the feet with a 30 blade, and then I will scissor her. Okay. This is the seven blade for the trunk of the body. I usually keep the harness very loose when I am blow drying in case the dog wants to lay down. Keep them a loose leash. So you can see with her coat tight, the five blade against the grain before the bath left it the same length as the seven blade with the grain after the bath. Is that all true? No, it depends on the coat type. Dogs with really silky coats will cut like twice as short as a dog with a thicker coat. Um, dogs with cottony coats or you know, like poodle coats, curly coats, they're gonna cut true to length backwards and forwards with the blade. So really, really just depends on the individual coat type. And when clippering against the grain, I never do it on certain coat types. I only do it on dogs with a undetermined coat length which means the coat grows and grows and grows and grows and it doesn't stop at a certain point and shed out. If the coat sheds out, I never clip against the grain. I never clip her against the grain on a schnauzer. Schnauzers are predisposed to schnauzer comedio syndrome. And while the clipping against the grain doesn't cause the schnauzer comedio syndrome, it pushes those follicles open because they've got coarser guard hairs in there and you might bump into the comedios that are already there and then you cause a secondary infection and that can be quite bad for a schnauzer. So, you know, it all depends. And that's where experience comes in or good training. And I see so many groomers who really condone things that they were taught, you know, but sometimes they're taught, like clipping against the grain on a schnauzer, many of them are taught that way, and, you know, you got to do your homework and study it and see what's right for you. I also would never clip her a copper spaniel against the grain. And, you know, that would, a lot of times they get those little crusty things and all, and when you clip her against the grain, you're just opening that skin up for infection. And I like to clarify that because you guys see me do it a lot, right? I just don't want you to have the impression it's good for everybody. Because it's definitely not. Good girl. That was really nice. Yes, that was very, very nice. Yes, he was. Oh, he's a good girl. He's a good girl. So if you notice, my, my hooks that we have on the groomer's harness have the ability to spin without getting twisted up. That's very necessary, don't you think? 
Otherwise, you'd just get all wound up. Yes, you'd get all wound up. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. You'd just get all wound up. And then you'd be all stuck. Yes, you'd be all stuck. <laughs> silly Angelie. Yes, you're silly. Yes, you are. <laughs> Hello. All right. Go back over her feet with a 30 blade. You excited? For those who are joining us now, I will be washing my dog's ammo and BB today. Ammo looks like a different dog since the last time you guys saw him get a bath. He's very hairy. But washing my dogs will be at the end of the day because I do have a book solid day. No time to spare. Not a second to spare. All right, five eighths blade. This is the longest blade I have on hand. It's a five eighths HT. I'm going to clip her against the grain, up the outside of the leg, the back of the front leg. The inside of all four legs, up the back of the leg. The way that I clipper a lot of dogs' legs is very strategic because I can take them nice and short and have them look fuller and it greatly reduces the amount of scissoring that I have to do. I'm also going to use this blade on her chin. Just to set my length on the underside there. Alright, and we'll scissor the rest. So as you can see, I cut all this hair off the legs with clippers, and yet they still look like a scissored length, right? It's all in your pattern. Shortcuts. I need a garbage can closer to me. There's over here. There we go. That's a good spot for it. I'm still organizing this room for me. I only started working in this room yesterday. Spent some time last night getting it, everything where I want it. All right, now I'm going to use a 40 blade. And since she's got poodle paws, we're going to put some bevels right over her little feet. So he's here with the 40 blade, just by cupping around the lower leg and skimming in very, very lightly. You don't want to push in at all. 
because if you push in, you might scrape the skin. You don't want to do that with the angle that you're coming in at. So it's a very light pick, pick, pick. Again, that just saves more scissor work. Next, I'm going to take a four blade. Don't try this at home, kids. I'm going to clip her off the back of the ears because, like, all the way down to the base, because that's going to help me round the head and just improve my scissor time. And it actually makes the head look better. And the reason why I say don't try it at home, because these blades have wider teeth, and you can catch an ear in there if you're not really experienced and cut the ear. You don't want to do that. All right, Miss Ma'am. Let's get you scissored. Nobody's home. A big complaint a lot of people have about pet groomers is us not answering our phone. Unless we're paying $17, $20 an hour for a receptionist which adds 17 to 20 dollars more per groom um we can't get to our phone we have to scoop the dog up run and grab the phone stop and you know answer all the questions book the appointment and by then we're 20 minutes late on a dog and the dog's sitting there while we're doing that it's really hard for us to get phones but like in my salon i have online booking very, very easy to use. So you can either leave a message and I'll try to get back to you within a couple of days because I have long hours. By the time I finally have a break to return calls, it can take a couple days. Or you can just go straight to my website, click book now and book your own appointment, see my schedule, see what's available. Easy. Otherwise, be patient with your groomer. You know, like you saw yesterday when I had the Bernadoodle on the table, I'm not gonna, or in the tub, I'm not gonna take a Bernadoodle out of the tub to run and grab the phone. Just ain't gonna happen. And I considered hiring a receptionist for a few days, but I'm like, my clients are not gonna pay $20 an extra per dog so I can have somebody answer the phone, you know? They're just not. So, or they might, but I don't think that's fair. But I know not everybody can use an online system either. They don't know how to use a computer. They don't text. So for those, I'll return the call. She's the most precious little dog. 
aren't you? Are you the most preciousest? in your face. Oh no. Oh no. So she's got some little tiny knots in her face. I'm gonna use thinning shears. Thinning shears have teeth on both sides of the blades. And these are just really little tangles. So I'm gonna go in behind the tangle, go one, two, three, and slide it out. I tell you what, dogs who have those little tiny knots combed out of their face, it sets them up to hate having their face worked on. No matter how gentle you are. Let's tighten this up. I'm just standing for a minute. I know I love you too. Yes, okay. Snort, snort. For the top of the head, I'm going to pick up the hair between my fingers. head down to the side. It's okay. And round up into the ears. So a lot of people like to use blending shears on the heads. And a lot of times you'll see me using straights. And if I use blenders, it'll be like right at the end. There's a reason for that. Number one, it takes like three times as many snips with blending shears to get the shape, right? Because you're only cutting some hairs each time. That means you're working on the dog's face three times as long. And the problem with that is dogs only have so much patience for that. And another reason is and I didn't realize this till I started cutting, well, I've always cut my husband's hair ever since I was 14. But <laughs> um, when I started using blending shears on my husband's hair, which was later, I realized that a lot of blending shears will actually catch and hold a hair. And I couldn't feel it on my end, but he could feel it on his end. And so he started giving me feedback, hey, that pulls. 
you know, when you go to snip with the blending shears and I didn't realize it and I tried it on my own hair and I'm like, holy cow. So if you're using blending shears, you've got to cut all the way through, open and pull off, or you've got to have the right kind of blending shear that skims off hair. And I, not all of them do. Very few have that skimming off ability and usually they're quite expensive. So, you know, like when you're working around whiskers and stuff like that, and you're using blending shears there, you're gonna catch and hold and pull, and the dog's not gonna like it, right? Along with triple amount of time to snip, 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 snip. And you notice a lot of people do that real fast action with the blending shears on the face when you watch them. It's like, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> you think a dog likes that by their eye? I don't. So, you know, those are some of the reasons why you see me using more straights. And then if I want the blended look, I'll go back with blending shears afterwards and soften it. I was also asked about, you know, not using blunt tip, why I don't use blunt tip scissors around the eyes. I've got over 40 years of professional experience, so I just don't need them. It's like training wheels, basically. But a lot of people feel safe with those because they don't have the little points on the end. But what you have to realize is they're razor sharp all the way to the end, so you're still gonna cut something if you you know and you can graze something with the blade so you can graze an eyeball or you can cut something around the eyeball just because it's rounded at the tip doesn't mean it's not sharp all the way through the tip because if it wasn't it wouldn't cut hair it'd hang on to the hair and fold it into the scissor so i think it gives you a false sense of security A lot of times when I am scissoring around eyes, I don't put the tips towards the eyeball. I balance the middle of the scissor usually, or at least the top quarter of the scissor with the point past the eyes. So it's never like the point, say this is the eyeball, it's never like the points here. It's always like here. All right, it looks like our next customer just pulled up. <clears throat> Which would be the Wheaton Terrier puppy. So let's get this one ready to go. Get ready for the baby. I've lost my hot glue guns. I had two. I had one at home and one here, and I can't find them anywhere to do my Easter stuff. I'm like, no. <clears throat> oh well. I've looked everywhere. We've rearranged so much stuff. We've mo moved the entire bow making system home. But I brought some extra stuff back so I can um, do a little bit here when I need to because I haven't been spending very much time at home lately. So, yeah. stuff I took home. I would say there are 16 big totes, like big totes of bow making materials. Maybe more than that. I've got to organize it all. It's all still in the totes and everything's put away and I'm like, you know, like when you move. Oh my gosh. 
you don't realize how much stuff you have till you go to move it, right? <coughs> I've got enough bow making materials to last me a good two years. Well, I guess that wasn't our plan. The Wheaton Terrier puppy is supposed to be here now. Maybe she'll be a no-show. Maybe that's who was trying to call. I'll check my messages when I go up front to text this one. Just combing over her, making sure no hair is sticking out where it's not supposed to be. Well done. <laughs> Here's Angeline. Say goodbye.
Wheat and Terrier, they're called. They're only six minutes late. Maybe they'll make it. But I squeezed her into a tight spot. I had like just enough time to get her done, right? So if she's late, that's gonna, you know, make it really tough. Especially for a puppy's first groom. So if she gets here at 15 minutes after, I'm not gonna be able to take her.
so she is going to be 15 minutes late. She said she mainly just wants her head done. She said she already brushed her. And she used a blow dryer on her to desensitize her. So, we'll see. And she said she screenshotted a bunch of pictures for me. But being late, I'm not going to have time to go through those. She can text them to me. I'll let her know that when she gets here. All right, let's clean up. So we have a form that we send out to all our clients that has um, a place to upload three photos of what you want. And you can also pick different add-on services and um, you can tell us like a link that you want. You can also tell us special instructions. So um, it said, you know, it's like leave the eyelashes or don't cut the tail and stuff like that. It gives you some ideas and that gets sent out for every single appointment so um people have and she didn't get the form she did sign the form but she didn't upload the pictures but you can upload them right there you know of the style that you want or a former picture of the dog or whatever it's really handy huge time saver in the waiting room if people take a minute and do that if they have special instructions huge help And that's something new that we've added. So a lot of our regular clients, you know, they're like, why am I getting a form every time I book an appointment? That's what it's for. And they don't have to fill it out. But if they have special instructions and they want to fill it out, they can.
doesn't want a Wheaton Terrier trim. And she's the tiniest little five month old Wheaton I've ever seen. So she's gonna be really, really little. She wants a teddy bear trim on her. What we're going to do is just put her straight into the tub. She really doesn't want anything taken off the body hardly at all today. All right, boo boo. Her name is Willow. She's going to be an itty bitty Wheaton. Isn't she cute? She said, I don't know. You didn't know. She... It's boopable. All right, let's get her in the tub. Her's she got a boopable nose. In you go. Wait. So she said she's been decent. Sizing her with the blow dryer, using a high velocity dryer at home with it on high. But I'm not going to use a high velocity dryer on her. I'm going to use a stand dryer and blow dryer by hand because it's my experience that Wheatons are very sensitive to noise and she doesn't have that much hair, so. I'm thinking a stand dryer here for at least the first couple of times until she grows up a little. She's going to stay really tiny though. Itty bitty girl, aren't you? Are you an itty bitty girl? Get this warming up. I did end up looking at the pictures up front. Okay, baby. It's okay, it's not gonna get you. It's not gonna get you, Willow. See who came in. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Sorry, Hulu, I can leave you there.
to it. Back to it. Have you had time to think about the water? Huh? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're fine, Willow. You just need to think about this for a minute. Let's anchor you down. Mom wants to keep fluffy ears on her, too. As she grows, she's going to want the wheat and terrier body and a teddy bear head. Or a puppy look to the head. I do like to have a matter-of-fact attitude. Like, this is your life. This is what we do. This is how it's done. What is it? You smell? Ooh, it smells good, doesn't it? Yeah, it smells good. when you have a matter-of-fact attitude with them, they're like, oh, it's no big deal. And if you get all mushy-gushy with them, then they are like, oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, is this as bad as it sounds? But if you're like, yeah, 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 you're fine. Then they're like, oh, I'm okay. We're good.
Sí. No big deals. No, it was no big deals at all. You were a good puppy. Yeah, and now we're gonna go get blow dried. Yes, gonna go get blow dried. There's a good baby. There's a good, good baby. drying table with a wet Wheaton. A wet, wet Wheaton. Get you guys plugged in. Just a little closer here so you can see better. So I'm going to put the harness on her. Then I'm going to have her give her some freedom on the table to check out the edges of the table. She's safe. Let her feel some freedom up here. It's all new for her, so she's got to figure it out and tighten her up enough so she can't like step off. There we go. Let's move you to this side for a minute and be further away from the air. There's edges to that table mess. Now, a lot of meetings will just take a flying leap. They're like, see ya, I'm gone. So I'll probably anchor her. <laughs> yes, I'll tighten you up just a hair more because you really wanted to go for it, didn't you? I'm just giving her time to adjust to the space up here before I turn on the dryer. That's right, girl. See? She's no big deal. Aw, uh, thank you. See? She's no big deal at all. safety there. Just let her get used to the feeling of that. Even though I'm just using the head uh, the stand dryer, I am going to go ahead and wrap her head so she doesn't hear the noise so much.
so I will say in her signed form for the instructions for the haircut, she wrote in breed standard trim and signed it. But when she got here, she showed me pictures of a puppy trim face and long ears trimmed around the eyes, shorter beard. So, um, yeah.
Did I mention that it was a Wheaton Terrier who injured my arm to the point where I couldn't work from work on dogs over 15 pounds basically from 2019 till 2023. I love Wheatons, but they do have a reputation. And the thing about her is she's going to bite this way and that way in rapid succession. So you can't like, most dogs will go one way and you can move your hand over here, but she's going both ways very quickly. Good girl. Good girl. Very good. I'm going to go to pick up that front foot again. She seems to have an issue with that foot. Let's see if we can do it. Good girl. She's on guard as soon as she feels my hands on there. Good girl. It's all right. It's all right. Good girl, there we go. You're fine. I'm not gonna hurt you. See how she whips her head both ways? It's kind of hard to get out of the way of a dog doing that. Good girl. Can I have it? So I often teach that if you're training a puppy how to have something it doesn't like done, don't have it chewing on something. So she says that she's desensitizing her while allowing her to chew on a bone. And every dog that has ever been desensitized using a chew toy while they don't like something, every single one bites when you go to do something that they don't like. Why? They're being trained to chomp and chomp hard when they don't like something. You see it as a positive reinforcement. It's not. You need to teach them how to deal with it on their own and if you're using treats, use soft, chewy treats and give them the treat when they make the right decision. Don't have them chomping hard because every single one of them turns out to be a hard biter. They're not just a, I'll snip at you bite. They're a chomp bite, right? Can you pick it up? Thank you. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Good girl. So while I was talking to you, I was just giving her time to think and settle down. Using that time to my advantage. Good girl. She's got puppy teeth, so I'm not taking any chances. Those things will sink into me like daggers. Right? Pick it up. So I'm asking her for the foot over and over again. Good girl. She's on guard. Good girl. You're all right.
Something tells me I'm not gonna get her face trimmed today. Because she wasn't even letting me pet her face to dry it without trying to bite me. And my next client's here. break while I go up front. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to start live streaming again too. Because if you explain something like this to a customer, they're going to be like, well, what happened to her? Why did she do that to you? What, ha what did you do to her? This way you can see. And there's no doubt. Yeah, I covered her face and she tried to bite me. I touched her foot and she tried to bite me. Some larger e collars that will really help with this situation. The ones that I have right now are just a little too small for this dog. Sadly, the new ones won't be here till Monday. If I would have had those here today, it would be a good block to keep her from biting. Come here, Mama. You want me to get you out? 
Come here. Oh, my sweet puppy. Come on. Hey, it's a good girl. All right. See if we can finish cutting your nails. I posted them on the dog grooming tips and tricks for professionals, Mary. Sorry, I shouldn't be answering questions. But yeah, they're there. I'll add them to our Amazon store as well. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yay. That was a good puppy. See? They're really cool. They are a donut e-collar that's a, a inner tube kind of cushion and then it has a zipper e-collar that goes around it that comes out like this much further and it's clear so they can see through it and it gives you a complete bite blocker right good girl good puppy can i see this foot can I see? Let me see the foots. Oh, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt the foots. I'm not going to hurt the foots. She'll end up being a really good grum dog if we get her set up going good. Can I pick up the foot? Don't you do it. I'm pulling back fast because she's fast. She's real fast. So I'm not taking any chances. I don't feel like being bitten today. Good puppy. So I'm scratching her on the opposite side so she doesn't know which hand is doing something. Good girl, very good. That was a yawn, I like that. Don't do it. No, don't, don't do it. No biting. No biting, Mama. Let me have your foot. So I'm scratching her underneath as I'm picking up the foot. I want to check and make sure I got those nails. Her dew claw on this side still needs doing. It's a good thing her mom's been doing so much desensitization work on her, isn't it? Can you imagine if she wasn't? So homework for this dog, if it's at all possible, will be to use a salon board, like an emery board, 100, 180 grit, and the, the goal is to have soft treats, not something to chew on, soft treats, close by, within arm's reach. Good girl. And you're gonna file one toenail a day. If she's being bad, don't give her the treats. But as soon as you're done, give her a treat and tell her how wonderful she was. Good girl. Good girl. I'm not going to stress her out with filing her nails. They are going to be sharp, but that's just too bad because we're not putting her through that today. I'm going to finish drying her head.
And what I mean by filing nails is not overdoing it, not at all. When I say about training a dog for filing its nails, this is the type of salon board that I use. What I mean is go in just like this. So you're not gonna hold the dog tight, right? If you need to have something to hold the dog like a harness, that's fine but it shouldn't be your hands. Your hands should be open and soft. I heard one person refer to it one time as sheep hands. I guess when they're handling sheep, they keep open hands. So open hand, soft touch, you're gonna go like that. You're not even gonna try to file the nail. What you want them to do is to get used to you sliding your hand down the leg, picking up the foot, individualizing a toe, and one little swipe or two. So I'm testing her out to see if she's actually gonna bite me, which I think she will, or if she is just putting out warnings. I know that she'll escalate real quick, but after that first yawn that she did, that's a calming signal. That was an indicator that we are starting to make progress. So I'm giving her my hand and, cause I gotta get into her face in just a minute. So I really need my hands close to her face. She's laying her head in a cupped hand, that's beautiful. She's wanting to lay down, I'm gonna let her. But as soon as I give her room, she's gonna possibly take a flying leap, right? But most nervous dogs, if you let them lay down, but as you see, I'm keeping a hand here, so if she does decide to use the extra leash she's got, I've got a hold of her. Most dogs, if you allow them to down, they're gonna calm. Good. She. She. So she doesn't want clippers used around the eyes. Clippers are actually safer. So I'm gonna need to get scissors in there. So I really need to hold her. There she. Good girl. You did it. We got all four feet on the nails done, so that was good. I'm happy with that. If we get more cooperation, I might go back in and follow them or try, but I don't want to escalate her. I'm happy we got all four feet trimmed. That's real good, right? So it's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. I wish I could get a way to get these comments out of my face, but I can't. I used to be able to make them disappear, but I can't. Suzanne loves you. It's all right. Come here. It's okay. So that one yawn that I got, I praised. 
And I talk about that all the time on a nervous dog. Praising a single yawn can change everything in a groan. Everything. You got to watch for it. There's a book called Calming Signals in Dogs. And once you understand certain types of yawns and lip licking and all that are actually calming signals. And if you learn to praise that and um, tell the dog, yes, that's what I want from you, then you can really, really change things. And that open hand really helps. So right now, my hand on her is like this. It's like a wishbone shape, and her jaw is going along here. Good, good. So I'm telling her good on laying down. I want her to lay down. Because that's also calming, letting her snip the scissors. Good girl. go. That's a good puppy. You did so good. You did so good. Yeah. So she's got the type of eyelashes that grow forward, like directly forward. I don't want to take all of them, but I am going to take the front half. Not super short, but short enough so they're not coming down over her eyes. Good girl. All right, now we're going to shorten up the beard a little bit. Do not take a flying leap, miss. You stay right there. Yeah, we're building a bond, aren't we? Yeah, it's a good girl. It's not so bad here. It's not so bad here. It's not. It's not so bad here. It's okay. See, it's okay. Oh, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. I know, you can't take a nap yet. Good girl. Don't get that look in your eye. You're doing fine. Once I start building trust, I throw in a few soft corrections. You're doing very good. All right, we need to shave the pads of the feet. <laughs> 
maybe. Move you guys back just a little. Maybe so, maybe no, we'll see. Try scissoring around them first. Boop, boop. I'm not going to move out of the way the next time she goes to snap at me. I don't want her getting the idea that ma that makes me back off. I think we're at the point now where she's not going to like lay into me. Anyway, I could be wrong. We'll see. See how she's going for whatever's on the table too? That's part of the problem of teaching them to chomp on something when they don't like it. She's looking for something to chomp on. I've actually had dogs grab this and right into it with their teeth. That's not good, right? She's looking for anything to grab. Boop, boop. So no more chewing on things while she doesn't like something. So she's laying her teeth on me. I'm just leaving my hand there now. Very good. That was nice. I like that. Let's do this one. So I just did a very big exhale. She picked right up on it and gave me a kiss. That's another calming signal that you can do between you and your dog or you and the dog on your table. Just go, and boy, do they pick up on that. Or yawn, even a fake yawn would instill a yawn in them. Good girl. Very nice. Good girl. 
Commence. Here on this one, I quit looking for things to chew on. Jeez Louise me. Jeez Louise me. Alright, so her eyelashes really aren't working. They're growing straight forward, but I hate to cut them. Now I'm gonna try to trim the pads of the feet. Wish me luck. What's that? What is that thing? Training tips for this, you can use an electric toothbrush without the brush end on it and rub it over your dog, rub it over their feet. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, good girl. So that was a big yawn. That means I don't like what's happening, but I'm calming myself. So she's getting a good praise for that yawn. Yes, good girl. Go back in. Can you see how significant the yawn is? And how significant praising the yawn is? When you see it in action, it's like, wow, right? Because as soon as you praise it, you're able to get in there and do what you need to do. And it needs to be a bigger praise. So you notice that I gave her a bigger, good girl, I set the clippers down. I, Gave her nice, long, slow strokes. These are calming. So now we're gonna go back in for the other foot. She'll probably escalate a little again. That's okay, we'll work through it. And this is why I don't like to stop on puppies. I like to take them through it. I think it's important. I don't think it's too much for them to handle 
to learn how to be done. Good girl. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Very good puppy. She says I'm tired too. I want to go home now. So I'm going to tidy up her face just a little bit more and call it done. I'm not going to bother to do around her vulva or her belly because she's getting spayed in a couple days and they're going to do that. And I don't want to, you know, Wheatons have very sensitive skin. I don't want her rubbing her bottom or having any negative effects from that, so. Willow, where's my Willow? We're gonna be bestest friends, Willow. Willow. Oh, is you mad at me? Is you mad at me, Willow? says, I need a nap. I need a nap. Yes, I do. It's a big job for a five-month-old baby, huh? Yeah. It's a big job for a five-month-old baby. See? I didn't hurt you. I didn't hurt you. All right, stay right there. Work on your face, don't leave. Work on your face just a little bit more. So I'm not wanting to scissor off anything off the top of her head because she's got those pretty dark tips. And as soon as that gets trimmed, they're gone forever. She'll keep her black mask. But all these dark tips are going to go away when she starts getting full haircuts. You can see how light she'll be. So if I were her mom, I would want to keep those as long as possible too. Because they're really cute, right? They're mm -hmm. really cute. Yes, you are. Really, really cute. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. So she's laying her head in a very open, soft hand. You will rarely ever, ever see me hanging on to chin hair, not even loosely. I try to train my client's dogs to lay their head in my hand. Good enough. I'm going to call it a day with her. I think she did fabulous. So, you know, when people ask me how their dog did, right, am I going to mention all the biting to her mom? I'm going to give her homework. But when you ask me how a dog did, I'm going to say this was great. This was perfect. Is that doing a disservice, say if she went to another groomer and they wouldn't expect her to be doing what she does? That groomer's just gonna have to figure it out for themselves, right? 
Because if I'm able to work a dog through it and get to the other side and build a relationship with the dog, I consider that good. If she escalated and I wasn't able to finish the groom, if she escalated and she drew blood, if she, um, you know, couldn't be finished, then I would really discuss it. But for me, as an individual groomer, if I can get through to the other side, if I can build a relationship with the dog, I don't worry. She shouldn't have to go to any other groomers anyway, like ever. So, because <laughs> you're mine, right? And if they do something to push her too far, that's between her and them, not me. That's how I look at it. Now, if she got to be a year old and she changed her mind, say something triggered her, like next time she comes in, she's going to have been spayed since this time and next time, right? So that's going to be traumatic. And then she's going to escalate because she's going to be like, last time I went somewhere, somebody did something really bad. And also when she comes back next time, she's going to be leery of me. And she might shake. And the pet parent's going to be like, last time she wasn't like this. Why is she like this? Well, she had major surgery between the last groom and this one. Last time she went somewhere else, it hurt, right? So, you know, and I'm just giving her a minute while I'm talking to you before I go text her mom because I want this bonding to take place. Ow. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Ow. That hurt. So, <laughs> um... There. So I just need a minute with her to bond while I'm talking to you. Um, good girl. So I lost my train of thought. <laughs> anyway, um, good girl, good girl. So no rough housing with this puppy. No, I'm gonna get you games. What's an I'm gonna get you game? It's when you go threaten to take the toy, or threaten to get the feet, or threaten to pinch the tail. Never with this puppy. That would be an abs, never with any dog. That's a horrible game. If anybody in the household, any men, any boys, they're famous for that, by the way. They think it's fun. They think the dog thinks it's fun. The dog goes after them. Don't do that. Mm -mm. A better game is fetch. So, um, or better yet, obedience is a lot of fun as a game. Like, they want that toy, they got to sit, and then you throw it. They want that toy, they got to down, then you throw it as a release, you know. So, anyway, don't eat your hair. Give me that. All right, Willow, we're going to, excuse me, ow. Oh, that's what I was saying. If she escalates by the time she's a year old and I decide to stop doing a dog who escalates. So this type of personality, it can go one way or the other real fast, right? So I'm not going to worry about behavior at this point. Not until she's a year old. If when she's a year old, we're still having issues, then I'm going to bring it up to the owner as far as an issue. I don't consider this an issue. She's being trained to do this by biting on things, chewing on bones and stuff while she's being worked on. So it's at that point I would bring it up and say, okay, we're having these issues. The big problem with pet parents are like, why didn't you tell me before? Well, you can watch me on YouTube so you can see for yourself. Um, but still, I don't, I don't consider this an issue yet. Not yet. Right? Not yet. All right, we're going to go text her mom. Let her know she's ready. You can go home. Yeah. 
And so quick, girl. All right, say goodbye, Willow. would tell the pet parent why we need to do the homework and what that's going to help, right? But I'm not going to say it as though she was naughty or, you know, bad. You know what I mean? Because she wasn't. She's very sweet. Sweet girl. I had some cute little bunny rabbit. Because I'm losing everything. I'm losing my mind. Hold on. I know your mom's parked in the car. But I didn't. You can't eat that. It's not a toy. You want to chew on everything.
so she wanted to know how she behaved. I told her she could go back and watch the video and that we gave training tips through the video. And that way she can figure out the next steps. She'll end up being a good grooming dog with tendencies. The secret to this one is to never cross her. If we can keep everything positive and force free, she'll do well. Promise and Pistachio are next. We're going to start with Pistachio.
wanted to bring in a Chihuahua Lab mix. I'm like, Chihuahua and Lab? I really want to see that. Hopefully the Chihuahua was the daddy. For pistachio, I'm going to use a 5 8 HT against the grain on the trunk of the body. That is bringing him down to about a five blade length with the grain. Maybe a four. It's hard to tell. This way. As soon as I get the trunk of his body done, I'm going to put him down on a uh, pee pad and let him go potty. I think he's got to go before I continue on with the groan.
kind of make him more comfortable. Right, Duffle Potty? go in here. Just give a little man a minute. He's got separation anxiety from his sister, so he might not go just because he's away from her. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. So let's go to the tub. Mr. Pistachio. Today, my daughter is flying in from Maine for a visit for Easter. Can't wait to see her. She's my youngest. She lives in such a small town up there that she really wants to go shopping. So we're going to have to find some stores open tomorrow to go shopping. My husband's picking her up this afternoon. Trying to keep this tub 
set up for the little dogs and the other tub for the big dog. And for the most part, I'm using the shampoo system on the big dog side, unless it's like a Pomeranian or something. Most of the little dogs are going to still wash by hand. From a groomer's point of view, this live streaming where I can give the training tips where the people can see exactly what their dog is doing and where, it speeds up checkout so much because when they ask how the dog did, I say, well, you can go back and watch. And you can see the training tips there. That in itself is worth its weight in gold. Because if I can save 10 or 15 minutes of conversation going through it all and trying to explain it and demonstrate it, you know, that's a lot of time. My faucet has a leak, a very steady leak. Oh God, turn it off. <clears throat> All right, to the drawing table.
So we have a new low chin puppy coming soon. She's so pretty. Oh my gosh, she's pretty. She's being imported from Germany. So as soon as she arrives, she'll be coming in. She's like a cream color, just beautiful. <clears throat> All right, yes, good boy. So the standard poodle I have coming in this afternoon, new client, and they said that they have not been able to get any of the former groomers to return their phone calls. So he's overgrown. She said he's got about nine weeks of growth on him, which is over twice as long as he should go. And she likes a teddy bear cut. So, that could be quite the challenge, we'll see. She said he's only gone so long because nobody will return her phone calls. But it is hard to get phone calls returned. I'll admit that it is for me too. But again, that's one of the good things about online booking is you can take care of it all yourself. You don't need me. Alrighty. So I use the 5 8 HT against the grain on the trunk of the body. I'm going to try going over with a 4 and see if it takes off anything. If it doesn't, then I'm going to use a 5. One thing nice about most poodles, as opposed to doodles, typically the coats are very easy to work with, as long as they haven't had, been, had a bath and not been properly brushed. Like if you just let them go and you don't wash them, they typically will brush out super, super easy. but that's not always the case. It still needs maintenance, right? I'm skimming down over the big thigh muscles and over this elbow area. 
blending from the longer hair to the shorter hair. Get going. I'm gonna use a 15 blade on his ears. A 10 blade around the eyes. And for him, because one ear does flop when it gets a lot of weight on it, I do take probably half the ear as opposed to the top third. That removes quite a bit of weight and it helps his ear to stand up for a while. Which his mom likes. Right? Going to a 10 between the eyes. A 10 on the tummy. A 30 on the pads of the feet. Good boys. Turn, turn. Is that all your hair? Did I cut it all off? How could I do such a thing? How could I do such a thing to the purple baby? The purple baby, yeah? And I'll use a 10 under the tail. Gonna switch to a seven and skim over this little area under the tail here where the cowlicks are. For him, I want it nice and tight. Now I'm going to use my four blade on the back of the ears to get some of that heavy hair off back here. Right. Next, I'm going to use a clipper back on the legs, but first I want to get some of this hair off my table. work on them. It's very helpful. So I'm going to try 
a 7 8 inch comb over a 30 blade. And then I try it on the inside of the leg to see if it's too short or not. go with the one inch. And I'm also going to open up the flap a little bit so it doesn't take it as short. If I were setting this same length without a clipper vac, I would have used a 7 8 or even a 5 8 inch. The clipper vac tends to cut the hair shorter because it lifts the hair up into the, the blade. So if it's a silkier coat like this, it's going to cut shorter than a cottony coat or a curly coat. That it would cut through the length. When you use a snap-on comb like that with the clipper vac, it like combs and scissors at the same time, basically. Gets you a smoother finish quicker than a snap-on comb by itself. This way. This way. Boop, boop. Good boy.
mind you're making a good story there. the top of his head. I'm going to pull the hair up between my fingers. Make sure it's nicely centered on the head. That makes a big difference. And then snip off. The desired amount of hair. Typically how much hair I cut off depends on where the line on the ear is. So for most Yorkies, if I do the top third of the ear, then it balances out right across there. For him, I did the top half of the ear. So I balanced my length at the top knot with that line on the ears. <clears throat> cutest little face. He's absolutely adorable. Use a little light over here. I've got him. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> we have 46 people watching and 41 likes. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you being here. if he wants to. You know, Gidget has gotten, my, my little Yorkie Gidget has gotten so jealous if I talk to my husband that if we're in different rooms and I'm talking to him, she starts barking and demanding his attention. And then the other day I was talking to him on the phone and she could hear me. And she started barking. And I'm like, girl, he's my husband. It's not yours. <laughs> She's like, nope, he's mine. And you can't talk to him. Like, ever. Uh. When she does it, she'll go running over to him. Pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. 
And of course he does, so he only reinforces the behavior. And I'm like... <laughs> You don't need to pick her up. He's like, she's upset. She needs to be picked up. You guys probably can't hear a word I'm saying, can you? Because I'm mumbling. <laughs> Am I mumbling? No. Yeah. <clears throat> Next up is Promise, the Yorkie. She's going to get a Fusion inspired body and a Westy style face. Just make yourself comfy. Just make yourself comfy, why don't you? Huh? 
Does it make yourself comfy? Is you a good boy? Yes, you are. I've really come to love this little dog. He's so cute. Has such a cute personality. And loves his sister. But he beats her up too. Don't you? Do you beat up your sister? He's like, wah, 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 All over her body. He doesn't hurt her, but he's just like, wah, 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 Guess what you do? Guess what you do to your sister? You go, wah, 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 Did you like that? Did you like that? Huh? Did you like that little man? You've grown up to be such a good dog. Yeah. Yes, you have. You've grown up to be such a good dog. Yeah. You did. Miss Suzanne loves you. Yeah, she loves you. Yes, he does. Miss Suzanne thinks you're the bestest boy. Let's go. Yeah. Coming up. Come on. Up, up, up. Are you comfy? <laughs> the way he's looking at me. He's so cute. So cute. I wish I knew where my glue gun was so I could make him something cute for Easter. Let's see if I have anything that'll work. <clears throat> Something's better than nothing. See you next time. Can't even hear out your feet.
So the mats I'm using on my table now are actually exercise mats for the floor. And boy, do they work. Like, oh my gosh. If you're a groomer and you're used to the dog type of stuff that gets stained from things and get deep gouges and scratch marks in them like right away, these things are the bomb. So the ones I'm using right now are three quarter inch. Next time I get them, I'm gonna get one inch. Only because they'll be heavier and thicker. Not that they'll actually work any better, but look how thick these are. They're so cushiony for the dogs and they have the non-slip weaving on them. They're waterproof, which is awesome. I can use them in the tub and they're not absorbing anything. They're completely waterproof. So cool. I wasn't sure how they'd work out and when I posted them in our group for the professional groomers, got a lot of naysayers, that'll never work. Those won't work. They'll go flying off the table. They won't stay. They'll get all scratched up and I'm like, eh. I've been so happy with them. So, so happy. And these are big tables, so they fit my big table. Uh, I think these tables are 50 inches. And with the outline pieces on these, they fit perfectly. They also fit my tub perfectly. Which is awesome. I originally bought them for the tub and it came in like a pack of six but my new tub has these holes in the grates that go in the bottom that are perfect size for toenails to fit in you know what happens when a dog doesn't want to be in the tub and they're trying to get out and they go like this and the toenails slip right into these holes that are just the size for the toenail this didn't happen but it could they can rip those toenails right out. It's like, yeah, no. Or they get stuck and then you've got an unhappy dog in the tub whose foot is stuck in the tub and you gotta try to get it out while he's flailing and screaming. I, it, that didn't happen either, but I saw the potential. So I'm like, okay, let me get something to prevent an issue. So I bought these for the tub because they're waterproof. And it worked like a dream in the tub, like an absolute dream. And then I'm like, well, what do I do with the extra pieces? And then it's like, well, I got these new big tables. Let me see if they fit. And they did. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> the little things that make us groomers happy. It doesn't take much. And you know what else is cool? You can get six of these for a cheaper price than one of the ones made for a groomer. Enough for the tub and a table and a half, maybe two tables, right? I think it was $48 for six of them. That's a deal.
this promise. Let me go grab her. So for promise, since I am doing a fusion-inspired body, I'm going to use a five blade against the grain on the trunk of the body. That'll take it down to probably a seven. You could kill. You could kill. Oh, you being shaky. You're so silly. You're so silly. What are you being shaky for? Huh? What are you being shaky for? You don't have to be shaky. She's a cutie. Such a beautiful little girl. Up, 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 up. So I have one more Yorkie after this one, and that will be Lexi. And then after Lexi, I'm gonna take a lunch, a working lunch, but a lunch nonetheless. So I'll be logging off, and then I'll come back on with the standard poodle if he shows up. As a reminder, for those who were not watching earlier, I will be washing my own dogs at the end of the day. Ammo and BB, anyway. Not Gidget. Gidget's already had a bath. I did her before work. I'm going to go back over this with the grain with the seven blade. When I say against the grain, it's going from tail towards head, with the grains going from the head towards the tail, basically. Or in the direction that the hair grows, I should say. So Ammo's hair is long enough to need banding now. Not excessive banding, but banding nonetheless. So as a poodle is growing show coat, you have to band the hair in sections. So right now it takes about, let's see, three, seven, 11, 12, 13, 13 to 15 bands in his hair to keep the hair separated and from matting and keep it up. So you'll see me band his hair tonight. When a poodle has that much neck hair, 
and that much top knot hair. The bands help to keep the hair from flopping forward in the eyes so it doesn't annoy them. And as you, it grows long, you've got to section it in bands and then you section it here, section it here, section it here, here and here with nice straight lines and then band each section. Otherwise with poodle curly type hair, if you don't do that and you're growing that much hair, what happens is, is the hair clumps together and mats. By keeping it sectioned, it's not gonna mat. So I was going to do both of my dogs um, for the poodle video a couple weeks ago, but I had worked so many hours with getting, you know, a lot of stuff done around the shop for so long, for like over a six week period, I was just tired. And I'm like, my dogs are getting haircuts, but I'm not filming it. <laughs> I'm just not in the mood. You know, and I was, you know, my work doesn't always come out as good when I'm tired. So I'm like, these are important videos. Let me just wait until I'm rested. And I've been trying to get rested up all week before my daughter gets here. Because I was so far behind on sleep. I was working like 12 hours a day on dogs and then another four to five hours a day on painting, sanding walls, putting together the cabinets, putting together the cages, they, all the kennels, each one of those kennels that I have, I've got 16 of them. Each one has about 60 screws to put together. So they were all in pieces, so I put all those together, painted the whole shop, built stuff. All that was after hours, so I was wiped out. And then when I found out my daughter was coming, I'm like, I'm exhausted. I was so looking forward to a day off. And then I was like, okay, regroup, get some sleep. You'll be ready for this. So I've been making myself go to bed early all week. Now I'm like, yay. Now we can go shopping. And I'm not tired. And we're cooking. Gonna make a homemade apple pie some fried chicken, biscuits and gravy. We are in the South, you know. Here, I'll be right back.
so my next dog is not the Lexi I thought it was. I saw Lexi and was thinking it was Lexi the Yorkie, but it's Lexi the Shih Tzu. So we have a Shih Tzu coming in. There are Shih Tzu here. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was Lexi the Yorkie. I guess I wasn't paying attention. I think we have the, don't, don't count on it, but I think we have the Lhasa Apso puppies coming back next week. Pretty sure it's next week.
I'm proud of pistachio and promises mom she got a little extra weight off pistachio he was getting a little heavy that's really awesome that she got that under control because these little dogs can tend to have weak knees sometimes and that added weight really puts them at a greater risk for blowing out a knee which recently happened to one of my client's dogs who's a little bit heavy and a lot heavy. And they took her to the vet and she went in able to walk and she came out needing surgery. And the client's really unhappy about it. And when she went back to the vet to complain about it, they said, well, our staff needs more training but I can so easily see how that could happen, right? If the dog is on a stainless steel table that's slippery and the dog is resisting, which she does do, and the dog is obese and the techs are trying to hold the dog and she's fighting, putting weight into her rear, I can see how that leg would just buckle. So, you know, I understand for, for disinfection purposes, the stainless steel tables, but the slipperiness does not help a dog's attitude at all. Or if they have bad knees, it doesn't help their knees at all. So, yeah. I'm always worried it's gonna happen with obese dogs, always. Every time they put a little resistance, that leg just buckles and it's like, oh, don't, don't mess it up. You know, not funny, but just stressful. I think since it happened there, the vet should have gone ahead and taken care of the surgery, though. He didn't. She had to go to another vet and get surgery. He blew it off, and I think that's wrong. But that being said, if I were working on an obese dog who has bad knees, I wouldn't cover the surgery either. You know, if I did something to injure a dog, absolutely. But if a dog's obese with bad knees, that's not my fault, right? It's just not. I've actually had clients I refuse service to because they let their dog get so obese and the legs are buckling that I find it too much of a liability on my end to even go there. One toy poodle should have weighed six pounds. She weighed over 18 pounds with bad knees. She was so round. And, you know, it, it was inevitable that she was going to get injured. Inevitable. reason for that was when I tried to have a couple of conversations with the pet parent 
The pet parent literally told me that their vet said that the dog's weight was fine. So that I can't, if we can't even have a conversation, mm -mm.
Did a few Yorkies last week, belonged to the same owner. Same problem. The Yorkies tummies were coming down so far that they were this far off the table, like this. And they both had weak knees. And every time they moved or shifted, like you go to pick up a leg and they shift, the legs were buckling. And that's, that's hard to, um, it, it's nerve wracking when we're working on them. So they might waddle around at home just fine. But when you're grooming them, they put resistance into themselves. They, they brace. So if you're going to do the nails and they're not real happy about having the nails done, they brace and pull in. And when they do that, the leg goes boom, just like that. And it's like, please don't tear a ligament. Please don't blow your knee. Because both of those things are really expensive, you know, and painful. I mean, I hate to talk about it from a business point of view, but this is a business, right? And those are issues. We never want to see a dog hurt, definitely. But from a business point of view, that's, you know, another aspect of it. not the same. keeping proper weight easier said than done right I know that better than anybody Move around her eyes with the ten blade. Up, 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 up. I do her ears with the fifteen.
Hands to the feet with a 40. And then with the tail with the 10. Good puppies. Good puppies. It's okay. It's okay, baby. I should probably bump up that air conditioner. It's actually a little cold in here. I'm going to go do that real quick. Got it set at 72, but Casey's working great. And go back over her body with a seven blade. Taking off the entire trunk of the body. Skimming down into the hips a little. So I'm curious with the Wheat and Terrier puppy how she's going to progress. Such a reactive little thing. Jeez. She makes me think baby shark. So curious to see how big she's gonna get. I bet she will not weigh more than 25 pounds grown. Probably less than that. I'd say 22 pounds. If that's the case, she's gonna be the tiniest wheat I've ever groomed. to have a Carrie Blue that little. <laughs> the size of a miniature poodle, that'd be pretty cool. I've actually always wanted to. That would be something fun to do with my two poodles after I get done with the poodle grooming series. Turn one into a Bedlington Terrier and the other one into a Carrie Blue. <laughs> I 
would actually make Ammo the Bedlington and BB the Carry Blue. <laughs> that would be crazy. I'm not going to do that. I might do a Bedlington, but not a Carry. I used to have a toy poodle named Asante, and Asante was in a Bedlington trim, and she looked just like a Bedlington Terrier. So cute, only a miniature. She was smaller than this one, a silver. I actually placed second with her in the A division at the dog grooming competition in that trim. Which is a big deal. Because in A Division, you have Groom Team USA members. You're competing against, you're competing against International Groomer of the Years. You're, you're just top level, you know. So to get a second in that's really cool. She was so cute. If I remember correctly, Asante means gift in African. Or thank you. Pretty sure it was gift. And she was a gift. I've had a number of my dogs given to me as a gift. Asante was a gift, had a poodle named Charlie, he was a gift. My poodle I have now, Bibi, was a gift. And what's interesting about two of them is they, they had multiple breeders on their names because they're really from top, 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 top bloodlines, right? So a lot of times you'll have two or three different co-owners on really good quality dogs when they breed them. So there's like three breeders names on the papers and two of the dogs that were gifts to me had a breeder in Kansas as the co-breeder of both dogs, but they came from completely different people that knew nothing of each other. How weird is that? I mean, I'm in Tampa. The breeder's in Kansas. <laughs> and 
the the dogs are top show quality given to me as gifts and the people didn't even know each other crazy Sante was actually placed in a home when she was about a year old with one of my clients and she was put up she was being kept as a show dog and had broken her leg and they didn't think it was going to heal right so one of my clients adopted her and she wasn't doing well in their house she just wasn't settling in and so the dog absolutely loved to come see me at the shop. I mean, it was her, she was like in her element. And at home, the house was too big and too sterile. And she just really just didn't fit in there. She wasn't happy. And she came to the shop and she's like, I'm home. You know, so the pet parents like, you know what? She's not happy with us. She's happy with you. Would you like to have her? And I was like, absolutely. And she was happy too. So cute. She had her own little personality. And then I'll spare y'all this story on BB because most of y'all have heard it already. All right, I'm gonna go text her owner, get cleaned up and get ready for the next one. And I know what threw me off on the next one. The pet parent looks like she booked her online and she put in the name Lexi. The dog's name's Katie. So I'm like, that's what threw me off. Even when she came in, I'm like, Lexi, that's not Lexi, that's not Lexi. It's Kate. So, I don't know. She used to have a dog named Lexi. She might have just typed it in by accident. You know, we all do that, right? All right, say goodbye, promise. Aren't you cute? Yeah, I just checked the book. So, let's see. The Maltese mix that this client owned died uh, 2017 about. Yeah. Or before. She actually put her in the book as Lexi. And she also put Maltese mix, which Lexi was. But Katie's a sheet <laughs> So she was having a flashback to the past. That's why it threw me for a loop. When she came in, I looked at the dog and I'm like, she's not supposed to be here. Because <laughs> I was just looking at dogs' names. 
Then I looked it up and I saw her last name and I'm like, yeah, she's supposed to be here. And then it was throwing me for a loop. It's like, Lexi, Lexi, that's not Lexi. And then, anyway. We all do it, right? Sometimes I'll have a client walk in and I'll call their new dog by their old dog's name and their old dog might have been 20 years ago. And I'm like, why did I just say that? And they're like, they do the same thing. I'm like, okay, I don't feel so bad. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. It's not something you really wanna do. Tools cleaned up. <clears throat> so Katie's a senior. She gets pretty fussy about her face these days. And she's another one who wobbles on her knees. Um her weight's not too bad. It used to be before she had, she had some major surgeries last year and she lost a lot of weight after that. But her knees definitely buckle under her quite a bit. So I let her lay down for most of it as much as I can so that she doesn't get hurt.
Lexi's dead. Lexi, now I'm calling her Lexi. Oh my gosh. Katie's turn. <coughs> I'm going to use a five blade on the trunk of her body. She has a cyst right here that looks like it wants to open up. Got to be very, very, very careful. And if you're a newer groomer to the industry, do not be tempted to help those things empty. Leave them alone. You might think you're helping the pet parent or the pet and you're not. Just don't be watching Dr. Pimple Popper and getting any ideas. Had a little Shih Tzu come in this week and he was gonna come in about three weeks ago and she says because he had one of these on him she says he has one of those on him be very very careful that you don't bump it and so I said show me where it is and she showed me and it was already opening and I'm like I can't groom him you know I probably could have but it's like if she's already warning me to be careful and it's opening, by the time he leaves, it's gonna be empty. An infection can set in there because it's broken open skin. So I'm like, mm, no. So she had to have it. She ended up getting surgery on it and they cut like a place that long to get all the stuff in and around it. It was kind of like a sebaceous cyst looking thing that and usually they open up and they've got like this fatty material that drains out of them and then they leave like a big open hole if you squeeze it out and typically from my experience they do heal over pretty quick but yeah they had to do a long incision and really dig it out so that's why i say don't mess with it Especially if the dog's going to need surgery for it or whatever, you don't want to... You don't want to send a dog home with an open hole. Because then you'll be defending yourself. Did you cut it? No, I didn't. This happened. You know, I emptied it out. Just leave those alone. That's between the vet and the owner. So I don't even manipulate them. I don't like roll them around in my fingers because if it opens, it opens and you don't want it to happen.
girl. You're a good old lady. Yeah. You just stay comfy. You just stay comfy, Katie. I'm going to do around her eyes with a 15 blade. To the tub. Come on. There you go, girl. To the tub. Still trying to picture what the Chihuahua lab looks like. <laughs> that wanted an appointment earlier today. Kind of picture it looking like a pit bull. I wonder if that's where pit bulls came from. <laughs> Just kidding. 
would explain the attitude. <laughs> Coming from the Chihuahua, that is. Actually, Chihuahuas are sweet dogs. I love Chihuahuas. I don't know where they get that reputation because I don't think I've ever met a single one I didn't get along with. I can't think of one that comes to mind and I've done a lot of chihuahuas. Just remembered, I got three different Target gift cards over the holidays that I haven't used yet. So I think one of the stores will have to go shopping out. Me and my daughter's Target use those up. <laughs> shopping since I got them so no need to use them yet She's 14 or 15. It seems like she's 15. I've been grooming her all her little life. I remember first time I saw her. <laughs> of course, I remember the first time I saw a lot of my clients' dogs. Because when my clients get new puppies, I get new puppies. 
And the new puppies are always fun. Speaking of new puppies with the Wheat and Terrier Willow earlier today, that is not the kind of puppy you can go shop hopping with. Find somebody, stay with them, let the dog get used to it. You know, unless you're just sure something's amiss, don't jump around. That puppy could not handle that. She needs, she needs stable, consistent handling.
back to it. Back to it, boo-boos. Come here.
Sorry to leave you guys alone so much, but got to run the front too. Well, 
I'm running a little bit behind schedule because the Wheaton Terrier was arrived late and then required extra time. But the standard poodle is officially a no-show at this point. And if you were with me earlier today, you'll remember that I said she can't get any of her previous groomers to give her a return phone call. <clears throat> yeah. If she's a no-show for sure today, I won't return her call either. Just saying. Because a standard poodle is a big time block, and when you're a no-show for a big time block, you just lost me $150 on my day that I could have given to somebody else. That's not fair. You could at least cancel. But I'll take my lunch break and when I come back after lunch, I'll wash my own dogs and get them done earlier. And that is one of the reasons why I quit taking big dogs for a while too. Not just that it hurt me physically, but even before that, you know, when you have a client say with one or two big dogs not show like the one yesterday, if she would have been a no show with two big dogs, that's, that's very, very, very harmful to a small business. But at least my dogs are here, so that's a good thing that, that I did bring them today. That worked out. She must have found somebody to get him in sooner, I would imagine. She wanted him done two days ago, and I was booked, but I had a cancellation for today, so I said you could bring him today. She agreed.
of the nice thing is it actually kind of works out. I'm not, I, I actually, that, that's what it was. I didn't have a cancellation for that spot. I did a few weeks ago and then I was like, Ooh, I could do my dogs here because my daughter's coming in and I want them all fresh. So I reserved it for my dogs. And then when she called and she needed her big standard poodle who was overgrown, when she needed them done, I was like, okay, I'll do my dogs after work and I'll put this dog there. So I gave her my appointment. So I just, guess I just got my appointment back. So that worked because I don't want to work late tonight because my daughter's flight comes in at 3.30. And I don't want to be here after work, but I didn't want stinky dogs for Easter either. Especially with her hugging them and everything. I wanted them all fresh. So I'm like, you know, but I was willing to give that lady my spot. So I just got my spot back. That works. I'm not going to gripe about it. It all works out. So with regular clients, I have a three strike rule on that with no shows. Um, and my clients who book online have to reserve it with a credit card. I should start doing that with uh, over the phone bookings, but usually it's just out of time. <laughs> so it's kind of hard um, until you lose the money, but my basic policy policy online is now when you book your appointment online, I do take the credit card and you're signing that if you're a no show, I will take 50% of the appointment fee. This dog I didn't, he booked on phone on the, over the phone and I did not take the credit card. Um, so with new clients, it's basically a one strike and I won't book you again. You know, if you're a no-show, no call, no show. It's one thing to cancel, you know, and not give me enough notice. I appreciate the phone call, but if you're a no-show on a first appointment, especially with a big dog, will not book you again, unless you offer to come in and pay. If you respect my time, then definitely I will, but so regular clients three times, and I'm not going to reserve the time for you again. New clients one time. Because that's not a good value for me, right? not all right you're about done miss katie katie You guys are going to be surprised how the poodles look. You guys haven't seen them in a couple of months, right?
Yeah. From now on, I need to start taking those credit card numbers over the phone. For sure. Or just kind of pushing everybody to the online booking by not answering. All right, you. You all pretty. Did you have fun? Yeah? Yeah, it's a good girl. All cleaned up. All right, guys, I am going to log off for lunch. I will be back shortly with Ammo and BB for their back and blood drive. So I will see you then. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss my next upload. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.